This movie explores America's response monument, which is situated right next to Ground Zero. The monument was the work of sculptor Dow Blumerk and was dedicated on Veterans Day in 2011. As for the monument's purpose, Bloomer said, quote, It will give New Yorkers an opportunity to honor the veterans who, worldwide, acted as New York's second responders directly after the attack, end quote. Bloomer refers to the September 11, 2001 attacks. However, despite his best intentions, the formal series of this monument only commemorates the military service of men. Due to its formal series depicting a male soldier on horseback, America's response monument does not effectively honor women who served in the military following the September 11th attacks. This formal series, originating with the statue of Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius, displays a bias towards men and fails to acknowledge the 300,000 women who have served in the military since September 2001. A generalist monument would be the most effective way to honor the military contribution to both men and women. The formal series of a male soldier on horseback is thought to be traced to this equestrian statue of Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius. An initial conclusion that can be drawn by looking at the statue is that it seems to honor the military achievements of one man in particular. A similar theme can be observed in examining the Ulysses S. Grant Memorial in Washington, D.C. Neither statue makes any attempt to honor female soldiers, or even any soldiers besides the men displayed on horseback. While America's response monument does not aim to portray a specific male soldier, it is similar to both the statue of Marcus Aurelius and Grant in that it does not honor the military service of women. While there was a time that women were not involved in military affairs, that point of view is not reflective of modern times. During World War II, cultural icon Rosie the River became popular, symbolizing the vast numbers of women who entered the workforce while men went to fight World War II. However, the aftermath of 9-11 saw a largely different course of events. Since September 2001, over 300,000 women have been deployed by the United States for combat. A close examination of America's response monument shows the male soldier wearing a wedding band under his left glove which sculptor Dow Bloomberg said was his way of, quote, tipping my hat to wives, marriages, and strain on families, end quote. Bloomberg seems to have not fully understood the drastically increased role of women in the military, as seen in the aftermath of September 11th, and thus sculpted a monument with a formal series that only honors men. Given the role that women played in the military following the September 11th attacks, it is only necessary to commemorate both genders for their service. While a monument depicting a man tends to honor only one person, such as the statue of George Washington on Wall Street. A monument of a woman, such as the Statue of Liberty, standing to symbolize freedom, tends to display a theme or concept. As it says at Ground Zero, the goal of America's response point is to, quote, honor the incredible courage, initiative, and resourcefulness of all members of all branches of the armed forces who went and fought the battle of 9-11, end quote. From that, it is clear the goal of the monument is to honor a group of people. Therefore, neither an all-male or all-female monument does justice to this group of soldiers. While some may propose placing an additional horse displaying a female on horseback next to the location of America's response monument, a major issue is raised in having multiple monuments to honor groups of people at the same location. Frederick Hart's work of the three soldiers of Washington, D.C. present three men, each representing a different race. One soldier is white, one soldier is African American, and one soldier is Latino. The message this monument sends is that we are divided as a nation by race. In a similar manner, having separate male and female monuments at Ground Zero would send the message that we are divided as a nation by gender, perhaps indicated by the Vietnam Women's Memorial. A genderless monument would be an effective way to show our unity as a nation while not displaying bias towards a particular gender. While some may propose that a wall would be a good method to do so, such as the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, a problem exists, as there already is a wall at Ground Zero to honor the men and women who lost their lives in the September 11th attacks. A second wall would only weaken the effect of the already existing wall. Perhaps the best type of genderless monument would be a horse itself, as America's response monument's current form is influenced by photographs of many soldiers who fought on horseback in Afghanistan following 9-11. While a variety of genderless monuments exist that can effectively honor both the men and women who served the United States military in the aftermath of 9-11, the underlying theme is this. Women's contributions to the military must be recognized just as much as that of men. Therefore, America's response monument's current form does not effectively honor the women who served the military following the September 11th attacks.